Please note that there is no physical location. Observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 8758-2478-5050. And the password is 479696. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashua's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly notified at City Hall and Hunt Memorial Library. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 99, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. We'll start tonight's meeting by having the clerk call the roll. Did the clerk join us? Uh, he's, yep. Uh, I don't, Mr. Garino. I don't see him, so I will call the roll. Uh, I am here, I can hear everyone, and I am alone and practicing social distancing. Alderman Harriet Gothright. Present. And you're alone and, <laughs> okay. Alderman Clee. I am, I'm sorry, I'm present. I'm alone in this room. Okay. And I'm practicing social distancing. Excellent. Alderman Clee. I'm here, I'm alone. I'm practicing social distancing and I can hear everything. All right, Alderman Lou. Okay, I'll, I'll just tell him that. Okay. Alderman Wilshire. I am here, I can hear everyone, and I am social distancing. All right, Mrs. Bishop. I'm here, I'm alone in my room, and I'm practicing social distancing as well. Mrs. Brown. I am here, I am wearing earbuds, so no one else can hear me, and I am practicing social distancing. All right. Uh, I know that Ms. Giglio is probably not going to be with us this evening. Mr. Garino hasn't joined us. Ms. Raymond. Uh, I'm here and I'm alone in the room and I can hear everybody. Thanks. Okay, we have a quorum. All right. Uh, the previous meeting, minutes of the previous meeting of August 27, 2020, there being no objection, we will waive the reading uh, and accept the minutes and place them on file. Remarks by the chairman, sorry for the late start, but we wanted to be sure everyone could have a chance to attend the meeting tonight. We had an open house uh, for the public. There was an open house for parents at Elm Street Middle School tonight and several of our people had to attend. Remarks by school administration, John, anything? Yes, just very briefly, uh, we know we've had some issues with uh, getting the packages out to everybody. Uh, we think we have nailed that down to the size um, that Donna Graham was allowed to send and receive. So she's worked with our IGT department to correct that. Uh, that said, uh, you should have received actually five emails for tonight. First one was the agenda with a the packet, then the uh, Harriman presentation, which you'll see later, and the Harvey presentation. Um, then we sent out a, a quote for security cameras for Fairgrounds Middle School. And finally, a potential change order, which we need to have you approve uh, because it's over both uh, my and, and Alderman Dowd's uh, limits. And that's all I have. Okay. I would like to put the actual invoices that 
constitute the biggest bulk of the package, uh, perhaps on a school district site somewhere where you can go look at them if you'd like, rather than just the total amount. Uh, they en encompass a, an enormous amount of detail and of course Sean and I look at them pretty closely, but uh, um, I'm not sure that everybody needs to be printing out 80 pages every night. So uh, if nobody has a problem with that, we'll put them on the website. And if you want to look at them before the meeting, you can go, go look at them and we'll just address the, the, uh, in the uh, financials when we approve them. Would anybody prefer to get that big package? Chairman Dow, can I just ask that we, in the agenda, that you just put a link in the agenda. So when we get the digital, we can just click on it and it'll bring us to there. Sure. So as you said, we don't have to print it, but we've got the link right there at our fingertips. Good point, good point. Okay, so uh, the first thing we'll have is the architect's report from Harriman and everybody got a copy of the presentation and we will have uh, Mr. Willett take us through it. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. I will uh, bring up the presentation. I will uh, add that I uh, added a few slides for tonight, uh, just things I wanted to show that developed since I, was, since I sent that out early in the week, but I will be sure to copy everyone uh, after, this, after this is complete. So they were added late today, so that's why we didn't, we didn't get to them up to you. Mm -hmm. Um, so tonight, I'd like to uh, review some construction administration update um, over at Fairgrounds and Penichuk. I tried to uh, stay stay a little light on this because I know Harvey uh, has a really good slideshow set up uh, for the construction in the field, but I did want to you know kind of cover the things that we we've been looking at and and uh, following up on uh, on our end. Um, they have some really nice photos. We don't see. Uh, all the photos here. Uh, I know you'll see them in, in Harvey's presentation, and Alderman Dowd also sent out a few that were, were really nice earlier today. And then give you a little update on the design milestones uh, and pro progress for the Penichuk School and the new middle school. And then we'll review the project schedule again, like we kind of been doing uh, on a regular basis. So at Fairgrounds. Um, Harvey's uh, moving along over there, and we've been uh, supporting that on the on the architect side, doing construction administration. Um, we've seen over well over 80 submittals, um, and we continue to review those uh, as as quickly as we can as they come in. Uh, Harvey's doing a really good job of getting them in, so that we have a chance to review them um, in a timely manner and and get them you know, keep them moving on the on the work. Um, Your slides think, haven't changed. Oh boy. Still on the agenda, at least on mine. Yeah. One second. I'm doing something different. We're also getting background noise on somebody's. Oh, I think that's me. Hold on. I'll turn the radio off in the in the background there. Okay. That's me. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Sorry. Yep. There you go. All right, now you can hear me? Yep. And it went back to a different slide. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Um, all right, I apologize. So here we are. Uh, again, I, like I said, we're, we're working on submittals. And, and just to reiterate what submittals are, um, Harvey will send us the, the, based on our specifications, they'll send us the products, uh, materials, and color selections that that are, are selected and, and make and we review those uh, for measurements and calculations and all these different aspects to make sure um, that the the project is getting the products that were, were expected based on our drawings and designs. Um, 
RFIs, again, requests for information, uh, again, part of the normal process of, um, of construction is that if they find things in the field or are unclear on, on a certain design aspect, they'll send in uh, an item called an RFI. It's basically usually like a question or, or looking for a clarification. Uh, so far to date, uh, or actually this, since this presentation was created, it was, it was about 17 um, that we responded to. And then new proposals uh, that have come in and, and have been recommended by Harriman um, are for, and I think some of these will be reviewed tonight. I'm actually pretty sure they all are, um, but one for duct cleaning. So the, the ducts in fairgrounds um, are, are you know, relatively, uh, they're older, older ducts. Um, and um, occasionally you should do some cleaning to them to help get out the debris that just forms uh, in, in them. It's kind of like having an air conditioner and you got to clean that filter occasionally to, to keep the airflow uh, clean and healthy. So just one uh, there. If I yep. could just jump in for a second. Uh, sure. uh, for normal work anyway, but also because of COVID, uh, when we have the air going through the, the system, uh, using the better filters isn't going to help much if the ducts are are dirty and both schools, they haven't had the ducks cleaned in decades. So, uh, you know, they, they need them desperately. So we'll be addressing both of those schools tonight. So, okay. Great. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, as um, the, the, um, the ducks, you know, they build up with dust and then, so in, in benefit of not only getting rid of some of the debris, the, you know, Let's, let's call them like germs and stuff that might be caught up in there and blown around. Uh, it also increases airflow. So now, now you've opened up those ducts and additional airflow can go through. Um, so it is, it is good to get those cleaned and a construction time is a, is a great time to do it. Um, so, you, so you can, you know, just be sure that the whole project's getting a fresh update when you're, when you're working on that. Um, another item uh, that's coming back as a credit is that we, we had shown some uh, metal closure around a few lockers. Uh, there's some lockers that, uh, butt up against an existing tile wainscot, um, and then above that locker, there would be a gap between it. And uh, the locker manufacturer came back and said, "If we close that up with a lock with a um, metal closure, uh, it's going to kind of wrinkle and cause the lockers to kind of buckle a little bit." And so, um, working with Harvey, they they uh, suggested that putting putting a um, a small a smaller piece of plywood behind it, and then and then sealing up the gap. With some silicone, um, they they have they had the the funds right in their project to cover the cost of the, the plywood piece, so they're netting a result of four hundred dollars savings to the project, and still getting the result that we that we're looking for. Um, and then a tile wainscot ad in the toilet room um, that's an ad of a little over twenty five hundred dollars. Um, all the all the toilet new toilet rooms that are being um, renovated have a tile wainscot inside of them. So like a hard porcelain tile, uh, easier to clean, um, you know, better for maintenance. And uh, one of them was, was overlooked in the, um, uh, the, the um, I guess it was the, the, the suspension, in-house suspension room. There's a toilet room in there, apologize. The, and that, that room, um, we really think was is definitely needed that additional tile wainscot. So we, we're recommending that that change proposal. A uh, few updates on discussions that we've had uh, in meetings in the past couple of weeks here. The uh, Holocaust Memorial, there's a memorial in the eighth grade wing that the students uh, have been contributing to. Uh, this is coming from the teacher that kind of runs this um, this program that she's working on to, to Bring acknowledgement to the Holocaust, um, and and she was saying that this, these students have been kind of working on this for several years, um, and so there was this is in that area that's kind of the team commons and collaboration area inside the core of the uh, classroom wings, and uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't really brought to our attention exactly what that was during design, so it was kind of overlooked uh, unintentionally. Um, and we thought it was really important, and, and so did the principal over there and the, and the teacher that supports this, this particular display that, that it get incorporated into the design. Um, so we kind of had a, 
I, I don't want to call it an emergency meeting, but it was a, it was a very uh, urgent meeting to because Harvey is starting construction right in this area. They have studs. They've actually moved this this picture that you're seeing there on the bottom left is the display before uh, it, the construction started, uh, and so they had to they had moved it out of the way a little bit while they were putting steel studs in for some of the walls that we had intended to uh, put in, uh, and so. Uh, we had a kind of an urgent meeting pulled together and came up with some some uh, crafty ideas on where this might go and how it might be addressed. It's a it's almost a 30 foot wide by a little over two and a, two, a little over, over two foot deep display built as one solid unit. It's a rather large unit. And you, as you can see, it goes right up to the structure. Um, and so everyone involved thought it was very important to figure a good way to actually bring uh, more light to it and bring it to maybe a location that um, that more people will be able to see than just maybe just the students in the eighth grade wing. Uh, my understanding is there's uh, 1.5 million paper clips in that bottom display that represents all the, uh, the children that were lost during the Holocaust. Um, and then the upper portion are, are just like displays that the students kind of create. Uh, I don't know if it's a yearly or, or one, you know, one section at a time was, was kind of unclear to me. Um, so Sean, Sean and his uh, team uh, are working to uh, pull, pull apart the display or will be if they, if they haven't already, but pull apart that display um, and move it to a location. And I'm not sure if it's fully been determined. There was a discussion of the library or possibly the cafeteria. So I'll pause for a moment if Sean did want to speak up about it. Yeah, I'll just, uh, we, we met with the principal and the teacher and it's going to go in the cafeteria. Great, that's great. Uh, I think that's going to get some high, some high visibility there uh, to, represent, to, to display what that represents. Yeah, the uh, picture makes it look like it's curved. It's not curved, it's flat. <laughs> the additional pictures I put out today shows you it's empty now and uh, it may even be moved by this time. Yeah, this is a 3D image. So you're kind of getting that that warped perspective and a, and a cut into a 2D uh, view. Um, the image on the right is a, a janitor's closet. It, it, it's uh, something we're working on. And I just kind of wanted to you know, mention it because it's an item that uh, was brought up during a, a regular construction meeting. Uh, but there was some, there's a display down in the, in the unified arts area next to a custodian closet. Um, and that display kind of butts into some uh, utility sink that was very important to the, to the school. It's, uh, it's kind of their only one that's accessed by double doors um, and some piping in the way. So we're, we're, pro we're proposing a change, uh, which, which will be going out, um, if it hasn't today, it'll be going out probably tomorrow, uh, sliding that up just a little bit to that display to accommodate um, those pipes and then proposing a new mop sink receptor. Um, so just, just kind of pointing out some things we're working out in the field. And over at Penichuk, um, th this one uh, is the, the particular work that is involved this summer is kind of winding down a little bit um, and we're continuing our plans, but we, we received 19 submittals. Uh, the reviews all caught up there and we uh, received 11 RFIs that have been responded to. And there is a new proposal in that they'll be reviewing tonight, I believe, on the duct cleaning. Uh, we talked a little bit about that on fairgrounds, and they also uh, should be done here at um, Penichuk. So some of the work over there, we, we, we um, in the past few weeks, we had a review on site uh, that occurred, I guess, last week with a uh, new water line tie-in at the, on the site <clears throat> itself. Um, the... Uh, we had proposed Harvey working with Harvey. There was a proposal to tie into in a new water line into a, a certain area, and it was discovered that that particular location wasn't going to uh, cooperate with with the needs of, of that connection. So, uh, our civil engineer went out there, reviewed that with Harvey, and they came up with a, a an idea to to move it to another location. Um, we also were there to review the progress on the uh, secure vestibule and the reconfigured admin space. Um, you can see there the, the main uh, desk, admin desk, uh, is over by the, in the far left corner. I mean, in that far far view, you can see the main entry doors. Uh, Harvey's working to get in the new um, secure window, but the admin is right up against that, so they'll be able to greet people coming in and, and keep the keep the building um, more secure. 
Um, I, I didn't put many pictures here. I know, I know Harvey has some pretty nice ones. So I just want to put a couple in that, that uh, showed a couple other items that, that there, there just, there just didn't show. So, and so here's the window that just hasn't gone in yet. You're in, you're in the, it's standing in the uh, vestibule side of, of the uh, transaction. Oh, okay. So over on the design side, um, making quite a bit of progress over on Penichuk. Uh, as of recently, we've submitted to the planning board um, and they've had their technical uh, review. Um, I believe that was two Mondays ago. Um, and the planning board will be coming up uh, on October 8th for the Penichuk School. Um, we've submitted for the AOT, also known as the Alteration of Terrain Permit. Um, so that's in, uh, waiting waiting for a uh, review on that. Uh, we met with the kitchen director um, on Penichuk. <clears throat> and th this one came up as, a, as an item that uh, uh, Sean had brought up, that the, ki the kitchen director, director had reached out to Sean or Mr. Smith and uh, had mentioned that she'd like to talk with Harriman. So we, we uh, had a meeting with her and reviewed um, some items on, um, on Penichuk's kitchen that she had concerns about um, that weren't that aren't currently in the design or the budget but we are working to come up with some uh, means to possibly uh, see if we can fit uh, some of the items that she's asking for into the budget uh, there one you know things like uh, the freezer is a little small that they have in there so she, those items like a new a new or larger freezer uh, so we're reviewing that serving lines uh, right now are in the cafeteria uh, there's a couple of them, and the ones that are in the actual kitchen are very tight. So we're looking to come up with a proposal to see what a budget might be to expand the existing serving lines a little bit to accommodate uh, those potential needs. And then a couple other smaller items like a dishwasher, the one she has there is, is uh, uh, very old and, and is outdated. Uh, so we're reviewing those, and we'll, um, I'm sure we'll be back to to the JSSBC here to review that that design and, and, and what that design uh, might have for cost implications. And then we had an IT meeting with the um, director, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, um, the director of IT, the Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Parker um, and Harvey and uh, reviewed kind of what should be in all these schools for teaching technologies. Uh, it really was about all the schools uh, Penichuk and the new school are, have more of that IT work than Fairgrounds, and Fairgrounds is underway a little bit for construction. But we wanted to make sure there wasn't duplications of work over there um, on the IT side, director side versus the construction side. And I think we've we've narrowed that down quite a bit, and we're still having some communications on Penichuk and um, the the new middle school on exactly where that. Uh, interaction for teaching and what is going to be taught. I'll, I'll touch on this again in just a few moments. I'll show you what some of the discussions were. Um, we have, a, again, the planning board coming up. We do have a meeting with the principal uh, in next week. I guess that's next week now. Uh, <laughs> well, September's gone by very quickly. Uh, but the the uh, he wants to review some of the plans with him and just with him before we finalize the uh, the full set just to be sure that uh, we've got what he needs and, and make sure that uh, the layout is as he intends it or, or should be in, or should be done. And then our construction document submission is out to the uh, end of September, mid middle to end of September. All right, over at the new middle school, um, again, we had that IT meeting that, that was uh, for the, all the schools. And I'll touch on that again in a moment. We had a, uh, programming meeting with the special ed director and the two BCBAs for the school, um, which is for the autism program. Uh, that's that that lower level uh, down down uh, on the lower level uh, portion of the uh, classroom wings uh, area that was was brought into the project um, uh, as that kind of like it was an extra vote on, I guess, or I'm not sure exactly how you, you guys pulled it in, but it was like an extra vote that kind of incorporated that extra money for that area. So we had a great, great, great meeting for um, special ed, the autism program. And I'd like to sh show you a little bit about what we talked about in a moment. We have a principal meeting coming up, meeting with the uh, 
I don't know if it's an interim president, uh, pr uh, pr principal or the, uh, the new principal, but uh, we haven't met with the particular principal over there right now. So we have a meeting scheduled with him on October 6th. We have planned a follow-up kitchen meeting. I think last time we spoke, we had, had our initial kitchen meeting. So we're gonna have a follow-up kitchen meeting uh, next Wednesday. And our design development submission is coming up very quickly in October, the end of October. And a planning board submission is coming up in November. Uh, IT meeting. Uh, so here's a few of the things we kind of talked about. <clears throat> and we're working to finalize the, the outcome of, of the meeting. But <clears throat> some of the things were the cabling requirements for the district. Uh, we reviewed proposed typical classroom layouts like data, power, and communications and where those should be on the walls and and, uh, and, and how much of it that there should be. You can kind of see some photos that I've included. So like the one on the bottom right is a typical classroom layout. Um, some of these symbols have different meanings. It, you know, one might be power, one might be a data uh, where they can plug in either a, a projector or plug in their laptop to get the internet, um, a wireless access points, uh, you know, the, all those sort of like uh, IT elements. Uh, and so we, we lay it out in here. We've been having discussions um, with the director and, and, and uh, the group um, uh, to, to figure out exactly what the perfect layout is for this particular school and, you know, as new middle school and Penichuk and a little bit of fairgrounds. And then we kind of have our, our standard, standard typical kind of layout on the wall that kind of lets, lets you kind of pick what works best. I think what we're looking at right now is having some sort of connection for a projector of some level, some sort of interactive projector or, or non-interactive. That's kind of the discussion that's been going on. Um, and then data around the room, different ports so they can plug different things in, a wireless access point above the ceiling so that you're or at the ceiling um, so everybody can use wireless. Um, so that's where it's kind of leaning right now. I know it's, it's kind of gone back and forth a little bit, but I think we're gonna determine that quite quickly. Nope, I skipped the page. The special ed and autism meeting, um, we reviewed that, like, like I said before, we reviewed that lower level, that lower ground level. Uh, the image you're seeing here is kind of where it was when we went into the meeting. We're actually working on reconfiguring a bunch of spaces. Uh, the classroom target of 12 students uh, with one-on-one -on -one spaces were, was things that, that were brought up as points that we need to address. Um, an additional uh, breakout, like timeout rooms were needed. Uh, the combination of proactive spaces and reactive spaces. So the, the preference is to have like a proactive space per classroom. And then, um, no, I'm excuse, excuse me, I have that backwards. A, pre, a reactive space per classroom and then a proactive per pair. So, so that, that proactive would come off the corridor based on our discussion and, and they could take students that, that just need that kind of that, that, that calming down period to go down into the proactive area and talk about, you know, just and relax. And I think they said they do like different activities. Uh, and then the, the calming spaces are just the spaces where, where students, uh, you know, just need that quick, quick uh, separate space. Uh, we're looking at additional toilets that were needed um, and then slightly oversizing them to accommodate assistance where needed in those spaces. Um, an OT, uh, OT space uh, was shown um, and, and was, confirmed needed uh, in this area. Um, and then the typical classroom should include projectors and whiteboards for instruction and an outside play area was preferred, which we had shown uh, just, just outside these doors here. So I think we're in the right direction. We're, like I said, we're revising those plans and we'll share them with the BCBAs and, 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 and the rest of the team to make sure that um, it's exactly what is intended for this program. And so here's the ad that I mentioned when I started the presentation. There's just a couple of, uh, we've got some, some, some light, light renderings that I want to show uh, to kind of give you a flavor of the things we're working on. I, I want to point out right away that the colors of what you're seeing is not what you'll see in the final project. This is just kind of some studies uh, as we move to finalize the DD package. Um, and so the two areas I've circled are the areas that I've, I've kind of done some, some quick renders that we can look at. One is the cafeteria space, really focused on the stage that we've talked about uh, in previous meetings. Um, and then another, and another one kind of looks the other way and kind of gets a, a glimpse over at the kitchen, the, um, 
the uh, uh, learning commons up above, the the catwalk that kind of happens across there, as well as the uh, stairs. And then the other side that we're going to look at is just a kind of a glimpse down the hallway. It's very you know very plain, not a lot to look at, but just I think to me it was kind of fun to see some some new things. I know we haven't been able to share a lot of these kind of neat images, so that's what I was hoping to do tonight. So as I mentioned, as you as we get into the photos, kind of a you know this, these are the same plans. One's on the first level, one's on the second floor, um, and the only difference is on the the first two the the first and third photo face the the um, well they're, they're on the they're from the first level, and the first one faces the performance uh, space. The second one does too, but from above the stairs, and then the third one actually faces back the other way. And, and in case everybody doesn't know where we are. The main entry to the buildings right here. The classroom wing would be off to the right. The, the uh, gymnasium is off to the left of this image. So here you're standing at the bottom of those community stair and you're looking toward um, the, uh, the, plat the stage, a performance area. Um, Again, don't don't reflect on everything being very white uh, and, and 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 necessarily the materials of it, but more of just starting the building out of of what these spaces are going to look like. Um, and nothing here is final. Uh, we're we're exploring it on our end to try to determine you know the the the, the look that that is intended and and what works and doesn't work. So uh, we're getting very close to that, but uh, these aren't final images. Just want to share that. So now we're standing up on the, the uh, uh, second floor, looking down over the community stair. You can see the learning commons off to the left with a lot of transparency, like we talked about before. Um, and then you still have that, uh, that performance space down below. You can see a door to the left here, which is the gates, to the, the gates or the overhead doors to the kitchen. So they can separate themselves when they're prepping their, their food and, um, and still have students occupy spaces. And then standing kind of near the, plat the uh, performance area, facing back, uh, you can see the classroom wing in the distance, uh, a, a kind of a catwalk type area that goes over to the learning commons. And some these kind of rooms that pop out would be uh, collaborative, collaborative areas or, or, or reading type spaces or, or group, group areas. And then a couple of quick images down the corridor. You basically you're going to see some lockers and some doors. Uh, very plain image. There's not a lot happening. You know, no no color excitement or anything. But um, just kind of giving you a glimpse of of you know what the school is is working towards. So you can see some doors to the classrooms. Um, you know, doorway down to the stairway at the end. And if we step forward a few feet, you know, now you're starting to work your way into the uh, the collaboration area, the, the team commons area here, uh, student commons, team commons. You can kind of see the door and a little bit of a borrowed light there. All right, final slide. So uh, schedule, just uh, we're you know we're still tracking where we thought we would be, um, and so you can see we have a, a big red line through the third week in September there. Uh, and and we're still in at fairgrounds. We're still in construction, and we will be through through until about um, end of June. Uh, Petachuk is in construction document phase, and that's pushing into December. And then um, the new National Middle School is nearing the end of of uh, DD before we hit our construction documents phase. All right. Any questions? Anyone have any questions on what was just presented, uh, Mrs. Brown? Thank you. Uh, I have a question. I, when you had the close up of the um, SPED and autism slide, we're looking at those three parts of the building that are kind of um, where you've got an a rectangle that's kind of tilted this way. Are we? Is that based on form or function? Um, for tilting, does it have to do with the outside space that's available? Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, if I could. Uh, so the classroom itself was was kind of brought to an angle. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, and it looks like there's three different places on the building first floor that follow that theme. Yeah. Um, so what what we were looking to do there? Uh, it happens on every classroom. Every classroom 
uh, wing and floor. Um, and so what that does is by pulling that out a little bit, it creates this central uh, area inside the building where we're looking to have like a student commons area where, where students can come in, they can collaborate in this group area in the middle um, and, and do projects or, or just uh, have maybe the teachers want to have, have breakout meetings outside there or group or group meetings with, with more than just one classroom at a time. Uh, and so that, that space by pulling that out a little bit created that sent that kind of that center uh, area inside that classroom uh, spoke to, to allow uh, that to happen. Okay. And is there a reason why you wouldn't just bring it out on both sides instead of tipping up one, just bring it up, make it like a square angle to give actually that common area more space or is it just about size? Yeah. I mean, if we, if we start pulling it too much, we start, uh, I would say maybe not wasting space, but you start adding cost is really what it comes down to. Uh, and we, don't, we, we had to find the right, right balance of giving enough room to pull some groups together to talk and meet um, and students to meet and also not spend too much money on, on, I'll say, like wasted space. It may not be wasted because it could be utilized, but there's kind of that balance of working the budget and making the right amount of space. All right. Thank you. Anthony? Muted. You're on mute. You're on mute. Hi. Okay. Sorry about that. Something that came up today and wanted to know, and I didn't have the answer. Um, I was talking to uh, some of my uh, SPED people, and um, they, they wanted to know, is, has there been a space designated, as far as you know, for um, uh, uh, there's talk in the district that I've been tasked with uh, exploring a middle school uh, alternative program. And I said, I have no idea. And they asked me if I could raise it. And I don't know if that's ever been talked about here or do we just appropriate space that we have or has this, has there been a space designated for that? I think I can answer that. And they, we had the discussion before. No, there is no space for an alternative middle school in any of the three middle school designs at this time. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. That, that's right, Alderman Dowd. We, we did have some discussions on it during design, but it did not make it, it did not, uh, I guess, pass the, the test to get into the into this project. Yeah, I think it was a, uh, it was a matter of not only cost, but we didn't have the space either. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Brown? Is that, um, is the alternative program possibility in the new middle school space um, out of the question at this point since we're, while we're still working on the design development? Out of the, out of the question relative to the three sites we're working on? In regards to the new middle school. I don't think we have the land. We're already trying to fit in the athletic fields that the athletic director wants. We only have so much land and, and uh, to say nothing of cost. I mean, if we're gonna add classrooms and space, that starts driving up the number and um, it, it would be a matter of going bad. You'd have to increase the bond. It's probably not a good time right now to increase the bond. But I also don't think we have the the footprint, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie or, or Carl, uh, on the land to add any space to the building. Okay. All right, we, 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 can, we, can, we, we can work with that. So I just wanted to ask the question. So um, I, don't, I don't want to take up a whole lot more time on that. So that's for us to figure out. So it was a question that came up today. Today and uh, so it's it's not that it's not that the program may or may not be desirable. The question is where do you put it? And we talked about this early on, and um, there just was not physical room nor cost available to handle any additions to the original design. Okay. All right. So let me. I'll go back to my team. I'll report back to them. And um, we'll take it from there. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Jen, Hedder, did you have your hand up? 
Well, I was just going to, I think the reason that we didn't incorporate it into the new, into updating the middle schools and the new middle school was because we have an idea about, you know, we have the Brentwood school and then we have um, the one down on Franklin street that I think we were toying around with. So we have another um, plan for how we're going to meet the needs of the alternative school kids without um, kind of losing that space in the regular schools. But um, we can probably discuss that offline. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that plan, but okay. It came up today. So if there's a, another plan out there, great. So, I, so yeah. it, we'll follow up. And so I can let my people know. Mrs. Brown, did you have a follow up? I'm fine. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, quick thought. <laughs> I changed my mind. Was there ever like a programming decision that uh, at what point did that happen that we decided that this wasn't a viable solution in any of the new builds or new construction? Like, was that um, something that came before the Board of Ed? Was it a programming issue? Because uh, it seems like they kind of go hand in hand to me. Uh, it came up uh, back when we were looking at the original designs uh, months and months ago, I don't know how long ago, but quite a while ago. And, and um, we just could not fit it in space or cost wise. Um, it was not originally planned when we started looking at this middle school project. So, um, you know, and, and the emphasis was they wanted the additional space we did have at the new middle school to handle the special needs students. And that's what they got. So the extra space we had is now being used that he was just describing tonight, the, the special needs children. All set. And just to clarify, it, it's special needs children who are currently being serviced out of the district or who would go out of the district if we didn't build this. So right. the idea was um, we had, you know, it was gonna cost $5 million-ish, I forget, to do that extra space and what was the best, most cost-effective way to use it. Um, right. So and that was like, gosh, a year ago. At least. So. Okay, so I apologize for bringing something up that's already been discussed. I wasn't aware if I wasn't here, obviously. But right, this no. Is, no, this that's is fine. Something that that came up today, and so I will. We we will, we will sort it out. Yeah, we yeah. just want to make sure that we get you up to speed on everything, so it's not a problem. Okay, thank you. All right, now we ready for Harvey, Ken, or Carl? Who's going to hit? I'm going to let Ken take it tonight. All right, Carl, thank you. Um, so let me try to share my screen here. Can everybody see my screen and hear me? Yes, I can. I can anyway. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do this once a month and update this group as far as what's going on on site and give everybody a, a good sense of what we're doing there. And I know it's it's kind of it's tough to keep up with. So uh, this will be high level, and if anyone has any questions, just please let me know, and I'll uh, I'll be sure to answer them. So uh, I'll be doing for now to be uh, both schools, but um, going forward, it'll be just fairgrounds. But um, so we'll start off with Penichuk. So Penichuk, like, as I said, the goal is to just update this group where we are. So um, for those of you who don't know, the scope was to do an interior renovation of the main entry vestibule. Um, security window and everything has been substantially completed. Um, the, the only thing that we do not have is the cabinet unit heater in the bulletproof transaction window. And we will get that installed as soon as we receive the material. The staff has been very amenable with, uh, our, with our workers and getting in there to complete any work that we need to do. Um, and there's, we're, we're also completing uh, some dry sprinkler system uh, replacement and we have approximately two to three more weeks to complete that. Um, we're also doing some work outside of the school. I'm sure people have noticed. Um, the goal of this work was to just help expedite 
uh, the the renovation next spring. We wanted to reroute the uh, existing utilities to allow us to complete the work um, that we're going to be doing next spring. So this is uh, going to be very beneficial for everybody, and um, the schedule of completion will be October 2020. And any uh, so basically all the use all these utilities um, rerunning uh, data, water, electrical, and um, it, it just helps us uh, next spring. So here's a couple of photos of the interior vestibule. So the first photo on the left, um, and basically what we did, we, we gave this a, a facelift. We, we, we went in, we, we did new floors, um, new paint in the, in the vestibule, main office, alcove, waiting area. Uh, we, we did new um, millwork, and we also did new security upgrades to this to the uh, interior vestibule doors. So the only thing, uh, and Jamie also uh, showed a slide, but the only thing that we're missing right now is the bulletproof glass. And when that does arrive, I believe it is arriving uh, this week that will get installed and we'll accommodate the staff and get that installed. And the uh, cabinet unit heater is ready to go in um, end of October. So once that arrives, we'll communicate with the staff and get that installed. Uh, moving into fairgrounds. So basically this slide is just an overview of things that come over the next few months. Um, as we move through everything, I'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll work through the phases. These phases are kind of more construction speak, not really anything to get hung up on. So this, the, the first phase right here, exterior site work utilities and portable classrooms. So the big, the big thing was to get these portable classrooms ready for school at the beginning of October. So those are located by the rear, uh, the rear of the building in the eighth grade wing. Um, the portables are going to be ready to be occupied at the uh, at the beginning of October. I think uh, we've discussed with Principal um, Sharon Coffey, uh, October fifth, they're ready for occupancy. Um, so that will be that's the main goal for us right now. We're also focusing on uh, phases one, two, three, and four for the summer and fall. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll get into each phase and the next couple of phases and next couple of uh, slides. Uh, phase one is basically broken up the new entry in the admin area, and we're gonna be turning that over after school vacation in February. And phases two, three, and four is broken out, um, I guess, well, we can get into the uh, the original turnover date where those those we are striving to turn those over in October, but we're obviously going to adhere to whatever uh, the school district um, tells us that we're going to turn turn it over with the students returning. So this is this is the original phasing plan. I don't know if everybody can see it here. Uh, this is it's a hot, it, I know it it looks like there's a lot going on uh, right now. We're, we're going to redevelop this based on um, the recent superintendent's decision, well, student returning. Uh, we think that with, with, with a new change in date, we can be more aggressive and attack some of the, these areas and, and not inter, like interfere with the uh, faculty and the student life. So as we progress, we'll review the upcoming phases in more detail, um, but we most, mostly we don't wanna affect any teaching remote teaching or any any student life in the in the field so this will be developing and i uh, we will be developing this and we'll share next month an updated uh schedule and before we go too far sure. you're referring to the superintendent saying that nobody be in the middle school until january is that correct correct uh heather do you want to update us Oh, geez, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> that's why I gave it to you. You're on the record. Thanks ever so much. Um, hmm, perhaps Mr. Parker could help weigh in on this as well. Um, the board voted at our last meeting to um, delay the phasing in of the hybrid and um, focus our attention on getting the students with the most needs back in the classroom um, the soonest. So we're starting with 
um, special education students um, by grade and then with the lower grades first. Um, yes. we approved and we're also doing, um, uh, we'll probably be phasing in CTE students as well. Oh, that's excellent news, Mr. Parker. Thank you. Uh, CTE students, so we don't have a, we haven't nailed on 100% the schedule, but the CTE students will be starting earlier as well because you, you just can't do that education from remotely for some of those courses, for most of those courses. So, um, so that'll be coming out shortly. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Parker. Yep. Um, so um, we had a schedule presented to us by Dr. Mosley um, that went through the beginning of November. Um, so we, we didn't have plans to have, uh, the new plan was not to have any middle schoolers in the buildings, except for the special education students um, in the month of October. Um, Dr. Parker, I, I heard um, that there are plans being made to put, um, to, to make space in Penichuk for the special education students. Um, but I, I don't actually know all the details of that because that's not really a board level. That's more of a. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's so the kids from fairgrounds because they're growing under construction. So they're going to be moved to Pinochet. Okay. Um, and so, um, but we'll finalize that, but that is the tentative plan right now. Okay. So that, that is correct. Does that give you any information that was helpful? So we're going to shift back to Ken in a minute, but the point I wanted to make is that if, if we're going to give an advanced date when kids will be in school going forward, like the January instead of November, the contractors are planning to work intensively in the school until that date. And, and if you select that date and say January, you know, we start doing work. You can't jump back and say November. We'll have too many people committed doing things in there and and it won't be in good shape for students to be in the building. So we, we've we got to be careful with our dates. When we, when we pick a date, let's put it in concrete, no pun intended, but uh, you know, we can't keep shifting the contractors around because we're shifting start dates it just doesn't work that way. Um, I understand, um, Alderman Dowd. I, I guess um, I would say two things. One, um, I think Dr. Mosley is correct to put student safety first, um, especially in a pandemic. Um, and two, um, the board hasn't been given a proposal for um, what he would like to do with the older grades as of yet. Um, we left off with the expectation that we would continue to have students come back. Um, but tonight in the open house, uh, I learned that every single one of the teachers that, um, that I have spoken to um, is under the impression that they're going to be out till January. So that's where that we're at. Correct. So your next board meeting, can you nail that down? So my husband's yelling at me out till January from the other room. <laughs> I, apparently I said June, um, which is not correct. It's not June, right. January. January. Um, I think Mr. Parker said something in there too, but I missed it. Yeah, I will. I said, I will nail this down this week. And so folks, uh, tomorrow and um, um, I'll get that to the superintendent. He can get that to you. So we'll just make sure that we're all on the same page. Sounds good. Okay. And then if not tomorrow, early next week. So. Sean. Yes, yeah, just on the special ed kids that are at Fairgrounds Middle School, both the principal and I uh, suggested to the administration that we not have kids in the special ed kids in the school uh, given it under construction. That we have some uh, intensive need, need children in there that are very, at least one of them is very temp temperature sensitive. Mm -hmm. And during the construction process, um, doesn't happen very often, but you can lose electricity. It, it just the safe thing to do is to relocate them. So uh, as Anthony or Mr. Parker said, the majority of those kids will be going to Panachuk, but the intensive needs will be going to the South High School. At least that's the preliminary plan. Okay. 
I, I trust completely that administration is going to continue to put um, their safety and security um, first. So I have I have no objections to any of that. Do we have any CTE students in fairgrounds? No, that's a high school program. That's what I thought. So I just want to nail that down. <laughs> so I guess the question is, what is the date that we need an answer on the absolute for sure date that the middle schoolers will be returning? Because I think there are a number of um, variables in play, um, not just the pandemic numbers, um, but also, um, I, I personally think the ducks being cleaned is kind of important, um, and also our staffing availability. So I'll give that to Ken. Don't worry about the ducks that are being done as soon as we approve them tonight. <laughs> Excellent. Ken, you want to give a data on what you need to know? So if, if you look at this, this original phasing plan, these are all based off of milestone dates that are that align with the school schedule. So most of them are after a school vacation or after a summer vacation or, or et cetera. So a lot of these turnover dates are not changing, but what this, what the date when students come back helps us to nail down is to be able to get into spaces and do, and do work that is tough to do when it's occupied, like abatement. Like if you look at the, if you look at the the middle, like this middle area right here, there's a lot of work in there that we can get in and do abatement now. And if we can do that now, it'll save us a ton of time down the road. And and we've already, uh, Mike Halliday, our superintendent, he's already been able to tackle some areas already, but it's, it's just helpful to be able to get in there and do some of this re remediation work before anybody's in the school. So. If the sooner we know that the sooner we can get out of your faculty's hair and and just and, and do the, the messy work, it's easy to go in and paint a wall. But it's if we have to do the, the noisy stuff, it's that's when it gets troublesome. Like tearing the wall down. Right. And I'm I'm certain that there are I'm, I'm certain that you guys have um, safety at the forefront of your minds. But having lived through construction projects, um, at least on a small home scale, it's not pleasant to be in the house when there's construction in the house, um, especially tearing down of things and dust gets everywhere. And it's just, you know, I agree that it would be better to do it when the students are nowhere near. Um, so I think Mr. Parker and I can um, revisit this. Perhaps um, we could get in touch with the, with, with each other later tomorrow after he has a chance to talk to um, his people, and we'll see if we need to um, call a board meeting for next week. Educating students is extremely important, but my mantra as a program manager is time is money. <laughs> <laughs> Carl? I just want to say we're going to follow the lead of the school administration. I mean, education comes first in the school. We were just, uh, when we heard that there may be uh, additional time allocated before the kids come back. We're just trying to make the most of that time that's available to us. So I would say just as quickly as you could, but we will render to whatever the school administration uh, warrants that they need. We're not going to start anything unless school administration and the board and, and obviously you and Sean are all on the same page. We are looking at it. We're looking at what we could possibly do and, and, and we can get done uh, now uh, before the students come. That's uh, if it turns out to be November, it's November. It's January, it's January. Just as soon as you could possibly let us know, it would be appreciated. Meanwhile, we'll keep planning on what, what, what we could attack and how we're going to attack it. Yep, that's the point. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, Mr. Dubois. Um, so, Sean, I'll touch base with you tomorrow. Is that all right? Yes, yeah, so, uh, sure. Yep. Okay. Great. All right. Ken, you want to continue? Yeah, so just to kind of expand upon what Carl said, whatever information that this group can give us will help us because our main concern is to communicate this to the field and make sure that Principal Coffey is on board with us and can a lot can move her staff around and we 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 cannot interrupt what she's doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's our biggest concern. 
Um, so she's, we're working with her and her faculty to make sure that we're not interrupting the day-to-day -day life of the school. So that's our, that's our biggest concern. We want to get the job done, but we want to do it in, in cohesiveness with what's going on in the, in the school. So that's the most, that's the most important thing for Harvey. Okay. So I would ask, I would ask simply this, uh, if you don't mind, if you could just, you know, just to make sure I have it right, email me the specific questions you need answered now. So I can ask the specific questions to get precise answers for you in a timeline. Not a problem. Okay, so if you can do that tomorrow, I'll get the answers for you tomorrow or early next week if you can't do it by tomorrow. You, know, you give me the precise questions you need answered, I will give you precise answers. Thank you. Yep, All right. that's good. Okay, so I'll, I'll just continue with the, uh, the site update for everybody. So we're, we're at fairgrounds now. So I will start at the, let's see here. So we'll start at the outside of the building. So site work and exterior improvements. So we, we did, we, the, the election was held, I think, I believe two, two weeks ago, if I can recall. And, and since then the security fencing was installed at the perimeter of the construction areas per, per the approved plan. Uh, utility work is ongoing, uh, new fire lanes complete. We're doing the fine, the fine grading and we, uh, we expect to be paving in the next week or two. Um, we are, again, we are always planning for student return uh, middle of October, and that's what we're striving to complete. Uh, all the remaining exterior improvements will be installed in the spring, um, landscaping, benches, uh, et cetera. Here are a couple of photos. So um, up in the upper left hand, we have the, this is the new fire lane access road at the exterior of the eighth grade wings. Um, obviously these photos were taken a week ago, so a lot more work has taken place. I wish I could have more updated photos. Um, in the middle, we have the access walkway prepped and uh, the, new, the new retaining wall along, alongside here. Um, I know that we're, uh, we've been discussing some alternative landscaping options out here, so um, We'll, we'll certainly update the group as, as those arise. And then uh, the bottom left here, we have, this is the view from um, uh, to the, just to the left of the gym, where you can see some uh, new light pole bases. And I believe that's where a new basketball court will be going. And the, um, you can see far off in the distance, the new uh, student uh, pickup and drop off area. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, so the, the big thing, the big push here was to get the portable classroom set up for this fall. Um, again, these photos were taken about a week ago. So um, there's, these, are, these are pretty much ready to go now. Uh, this week, so just to update everybody, uh, this week the uh, final ramps are going to be installed. All the skirting around the bottom of the perimeter of the classrooms has been completed this week. And uh, at the end of this week, all the jersey barriers and uh, protective fencing will be installed around uh, these areas for the student access. Um, again, we're planning for student occupancy and teacher occupancy for October. Uh, these, these are the only, these are a firm date. These will be ready for October 5th. Regardless of any COVID situation, teachers will be able to be inside of these classrooms on October 5th to set up their classrooms or need be. Um, kind of a cool picture on the bottom right, uh, you see just how many foundations that go underneath these classrooms. I was pretty shocked myself to see just how many went underneath there, but that's a, it, it's pretty crazy. It's an interesting photo. I was shocked. And just so you know, when we're done with the portables in no longer than a year, as was voted, those portables will be removed, those foundations will be taken out, and that area right there will be returned to grass with irrigation, I believe. <laughs> okay, so we'll move into phase one. So phase one is really not, not really, the number of the phasing doesn't matter. This is the new admin wing. This is the front of the building. This is the 
Jamie's crown jewel. So this is a complete <laughs> renovation of the admin area, main entrance, vestibule. Uh, it has a brand new wood canopy out exterior. This is going to be turned over at the beginning of uh, February, at the after February vacation, 2021. Um, current current progress. I'll, I'll go through in the next couple of slides, but um, here we go. So in the if you see in the photo on the left right here, this is it looks a lot different than what you're used to. This is the view of the east end of the admin area. So if you look at this, this will be um, the new. I, I believe it'll be the suspension area and uh, just a, a lot of the offices there. Um, the, the next slide over to the right is um, prepping for yeah. the... Am I the only one having a hard time hearing him? Having a hard time? Can you hear me? Guess so. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So the, uh, the, the next slide, uh, the next uh, photo to the right here is we're prepping for the foundations of the, the new administration entry. So you can see we've demoed the entire front of the building and uh, in preparation for the new entry. Um, you can you get a better view of the photo on the far right of, of just what it looks like where we demolish the front of the building. Um, and the, the, the third photo on the right is just a view of uh, where the new gang bathroom is going to go in the admin area at the uh, front of the building. These photos aren't very pretty and they'll start to take shape in the next uh, month or two. Phase two, this is um, basically a, the, um, the reno of the workshop, cooking lab, CTE, music band room. The original turnover for this was in October. Um, where the finishes will be complete in October, but um, obviously we're, we're going to work with whatever the date, the final date is, and we'll we'll get in there. Our biggest obstacle uh, in these in these early phases, in the phases that we're going to talk about tonight is getting the material in time. So regardless of when the spaces are turned over, we're gonna make sure they're turned over safely, but we're gonna to have to wait for certain materials to come in, such as lockers, light fixtures, um, fabric panels, millwork. When those materials come in, we'll make sure we uh, operate with principal coffee and get in there when we can to not interfere with any teaching or, or, or learning. So. The big, the big turnover date is going to going to be as of uh, we're we're pushing towards January 2021, but we'll we'll wait for the final date. But as as of right now, we're pushing to turn these spaces over in October, and we'll just wait for the uh, the updated date from uh, this group. So here are some photos uh, of phase two. So the the photo up on the upper left, this is a view from the old robotic storage. This is gonna become the new art room. So you can see we've demolished the wall and that'll be uh, infilled. The photo on the upper right is, uh, this is the old staff toilet off of corridor 190. This becomes a two split bathroom. So this used to be just one bathroom. Now it'll be a split bathroom, uh, man and woman bathroom. Man, again, these these photos aren't aren't very pretty because these are demolition photos. They never are, but in the next month they'll uh, they'll start to take shape. The bottom right is uh, the view down corridor 190, the same corridor. This is early demolition, no finishes yet, uh, just um, strictly strictly getting in there and doing the dirty work. Uh, continue with phase two. So the photo on the left, this is uh, this is the old woodworking entrance. Uh, it's going to be the new CTE classroom entrance. You can see um, we've we've built a new masonry entrance to the to this area. And then the the middle photo is the CTE classroom from from that entrance. And then you see the new CTE workshop through uh, these these windows. So that's going to be a really cool space. 
phase three. Phase three is con, uh, consists of all of the student commons areas. And I think that's where uh, you're going to see the biggest wow factor in uh, Harriman's design. This is a renovation of the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade student commons areas. So we remove all the existing lockers, all the metal fr uh, framing is complete. Basically, all of these areas are just kind of a collaborative space. And if, you know, if, if Jamie wants to jump in at all, please do so. But um, again, the biggest thing with these areas, we're, we're, we're pushing the push these uh, areas through to completion for October. But now that we have a little extra time, we'll be able to turn everything over 100% complete and not interfere with people uh, learning or teaching. So these these are collaborative spaces. There's uh, televisions, marker boards, tack boards. Um, this is a really uh, really neat space for students to to learn and 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 uh, commingle. Here's a here's another uh, another view of uh, a collaborative space. So this is uh, the eighth grade collaborative space. So sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they all they all sort of mirror each other. And um, so the one one thing to note is due to uh, the students not being in the school, we were actually um, able to get into phase four, which was um, the adjacent corridors that exit to the exterior. Um, and uh, my superintendent, Mike Halliday, was able to get in there and prep the floors and do the abatement and get every com everything completed. So we're actually ahead of schedule in all three student commons areas. So phase four is well underway, um, basically giving those corridors in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade wings a facelift. And those will continue to progress and will be completed and turned over in October. And uh, so we, we already have a lot of uh, great photos just from in the last couple of days. And I, I can't wait to share them with the, the group. And uh, thank you for, uh, for listening. If anybody has any questions, please, please let me know. Anyone have questions? I, I've been in there and there's an extensive amount of work going on and it's uh, coming together fine and, and uh, um, I think you guys are doing a good job. I just a couple things uh, I, I did want to pick up on. One, anybody hears any concerns about uh, someone uh, with vibration coming from the school site? Ken has taken care of that in a very a great manner. In fact, uh, he's prepping himself for a career in politics. Uh, <laughs> but the we the uh, the road that goes around the school, they were using uh, what do you call it? A impact roller. Oh, you're on mute. Vibratory roller. Yeah. So it causes a lot of low frequency vibration on the ground. But I think Ken's explained that to people, and I think that's all all set. We had a meeting today with the school principal on on uh, landscaping and uh, we're getting back later on more of that. But uh, my point was when we get done, I want the front of the school to look really nice. Uh, we're not going to spend a, uh, an over fortune on it, but we, we are going to do what we can do to to spruce it up a little bit and make sure the entryway of the school and everything you see from the street is uh, is nice and it will stay nice. Uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was at Penichuk, I don't know how many people were involved, but when we put the new water main in, Penichuk said, oop, you got to use this certain kind of pipe, which I think the added cost was around $68,000. But I believe we have that within our budget, right? I don't think, did, did we have to go out with a change order for that, Ken? That's that's within the budget. Yeah. So so special line pipe that you know won't get clogged up in rust or whatever the other pipes do in these days. Um, and uh, so Panachuk is coming along great, and I think they'll be uh, super. 
and fairgrounds is moving right along. So are there any questions for anyone for? No? Oh, oh. Laurie Wilshire's internet went down again. <laughs> She's gonna keep trying to connect. She had that problem the other night too, so. Kathy, did you wanna say something? Only the same with Carl, he's having trouble. He got bumped off and he's trying to come back on. Yeah, he needs to spend more than $12 on his router. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist. So that yes. makes that makes me feel pressure to get to the invoices before we other people. Good point. I'm gonna prep you for being chair of joint special someday. No. <laughs> no, but that would get you. All right. So Sean, uh, hang on. Yeah. No, change order 001. Uh, Ken, do you want to explain that or do you want me to, or? Let me pull it up here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this so change order PCCO number one is comprised of uh, previously approved PCOs by Alderman Dowd, Harriman, and uh, um, Mr. Smith. So this was um, Alderman Dowd. Would you like me to run through each PCO? I know that we've discussed these. That's what they're for. I wouldn't go into detail. Okay. So PCO number one was um, for a um, replacing all the curb at the bus loop. So basically um, in the original documents, we realized in the original documents, it was shown to leave the existing curb in place. When we were, when we were in, the, uh, in the act of dem like demolishing the existing curbing, we realized that we weren't gonna be able to salvage it. And uh, it was suggested by the site contractor to replace the curb in kind with new. So this is uh, this was an approved PCO uh, to replace all of the curbing at the bus at the new bus loop to match the new curbing that abuts it. And that was for eleven thousand six hundred and twenty dollars and fifty seven cents. All of these have been before the uh, joint special before, and and we had pre-approved them, and you you had blessed them. Okay. Uh, PCO number two. This was to relocate the gas line at uh, and valve at the portables. Yeah. Uh, we realized when we set the when we had the portable classrooms set, the gas company realized that it was not up to code to have a gas line running under the corner of the. Uh, where the portable classrooms were going to go. Uh, this was a safety issue and we needed to relocate the gas line. Uh, this was uh, paid to the utility company and that was a total of 4,969.14. Okay. PCO number three, uh, this was, uh, it was discovered uh, when we were at, when we were uh, piping to, from the portables to the existing sewer manhole uh, it was discovered that there was no invert, invert to the existing sewer manhole. And that, again, this was a uh, code issue mandated by Panachuk Water uh, Water Company. And um, this was added to the project cost uh, for a total of $4,161.05. Mm -hmm. And PCO number four, the final uh, PCO as part of this change order, uh, as we were doing the new curb cut for um, the new student uh, pickup drop-off area, there were some uh, contaminated soils, there was some uh, trash and um, that needed to be exported and tested. And that was uh, for a total of 4,143.39. Okay, so those were all the prospective change orders. This is the official change order. And it's uh, PCCO number one and it's and the amount is 
The summary of those four that he just mentioned to you are $24,894.15. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Raymond. Um, okay, any discussion? Seeing none, we still don't have Mr. Garino, so I'll have to call the roll, unless you have it in front of you, Sean. But all right, so what? I can do it. Go ahead, Sean. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman uh, Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderman Lou? Not here. Uh, Alderman Wilshire? Internet problems. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. And Ms. Raymond? Yes. And it's unanimous in favor. Excellent. That's passed. Okay. The uh, uh, Sean, do you want to go through the invoices? Sure. Uh, so th they're as listed on your agenda. There haven't been any additions. Uh, we have three invoices from Harriman. Uh, they totaled two hundred seventy-seven thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars and one cent. Uh, you, on your agenda, you can see the individual amounts per school. Uh, for Harvey, uh, they're invoicing for Fairgrounds Middle School and Penichuk Middle School. Both totaled uh, five hundred forty-seven thousand nineteen dollars and fifty-two cents. Uh, Page Street had one invoice uh, it was for the storage trailers at Fairgrounds Middle School for a total of $190. And Turner Group, uh, who is doing our commissioning, uh, submitted an invoice for Panachuk Middle School for $2,200. So I'll need a motion to pay the, the following invoices, Harvey Construction, $547,089.52, Harriman A&E, $172,051.97, uh, Turner Building Sciences, $2,200, and Page Street Rentals, $190. Who would like to make that motion? So moved. Uh, Alderman Clee has made the motion. Are there any discussions? <coughs> Seeing none, Sean, you want to call the roll? Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Mary Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Still not with us. Ms. Bishop. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Raymond. Yes. And that is unanimous. All right. Very good. Uh, any comments by committee members? Wait. Oop. I'm sorry. I forgot, Sean. Go ahead. Yeah, I almost went right by that one. So we, we actually have two more items uh, to discuss. Uh, both were sent to you uh, subsequent to the original packet. Um, you saw uh, Ken just provide uh, photos of the commons areas. So one of the effects of doing that and building additional walls is the security cameras used to be able to view both sides of that area clearly and with the walls we can no longer do so so we still have a camera that we'll see inside the commons area but we now need to install cameras in each hallway uh, so that's for all three wings and we received a quote from our vendor allied universal and the total amount quoted was i'll get to it in a second uh, 14801 yeah. and 38 cents and request okay. that we approve that. Okay, that's a security issue. Would someone like to make a motion no, no. To, for $14,801.38? Any discussion? Seeing none, Sean, call roll. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman Harry Gathright? Sorry, yes. Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderman Wilshire, still not with us. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. And Ms. Raymond? Yes. And that motion passes. Right. And we have one more thing. Um, 
I think uh, Ken can talk to this, uh, although I might be able to talk us through it. We've talked previously about uh, cleaning the ductwork, and you've previously approved work at uh, Fairgrounds Middle School. With the uh, delay in school starting, uh, uh, seemingly for a few weeks anyway, uh, we can do the same work at Penichuk. And we, Harvey received a quote to do that work, and it comes to a total of $59,705. And I'd recommend we approve that tonight. Somebody like to make a motion to approve the deck work. That what's the company, Sean? Uh, it's a subcontractor of Eckhart and Johnson, who's our mechanical uh, yes. contractor. So does the money go through Eckhart and Johnson? Yes. All right. So make a motion to approve the uh, contract to to uh, what is it again Johnson? Well, it's going through Eckhart and Johnson for fifty nine thousand. We'd be approving it to Harvey. It's their change order. Okay. And that's a firm fixed price? Correct. Okay. It's, I, I included a not to exceed uh, per your request for uh, 60000 All right. So let's make the motion to a not to exceed um, contract through Harvey Construction for $60,000 for the ductwork cleaning. Who'd like to make the motion? Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Brown. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion? And just so you know that uh, when we do the new building part at Penichuk, they will cover up the entrances to the ductwork so it doesn't get filled with construction dust, just in case that question came up in anybody's mind. Um, so, all right, Sean, you want to call a roll? We'll do uh, Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Harry Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Um, Ms. Bishop. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. And Ms. Raymond. Yes. Uh, that passes unanimously. All right. Excellent. Um, so now, any comments by committee members? I have a comment. Actually, sure. uh, Marino had a problem with his internet. I did reach out to him early on, but didn't get a chance to let you know that but he was going to continue to try to get in. And I guess he wasn't able to get in. Yes. We have too many students online. Yeah. <laughs> Just had to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we evidently several people are having problems. Uh, uh, not sure why certain areas of town. Uh, I don't think we don't need a non-public. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion to well, adjourn. Lee made the motion to adjourn. Um, excuse me, before we do that, I can see that um, Ken Lemarier has been waving his hand. Oh, Ken? Thank you, you something? Clee. Thank you, Ms. Clee. I just wanted to say that um, I know that we, we throw a lot around a lot of jargon, PCCO number one. Uh, so these change or so I, I intend, although we don't intend to present change orders every month, I, if there are any any out of scope work that is going to be performed, I'll I'll present one of these per month, and all of these items that will be will be presenting to you have been reviewed by uh, both Harvey Harriman and uh, Alderman Dowd uh, and uh, Mr. Smith. So all of these items will be included in any change order that is pre presented to this group. I just wanted to clarify that that. Uh, so everyone was clear. And if anyone has any questions as far as these documents, please uh, reach out and let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. Just to follow on, we, we brought this one up tonight for the ductwork at, at Penichuk was because it was above the $50,000 threshold that Alderman Dowd had to approve. So right. we felt we needed to bring it to the uh, full committee. Right. And there was a motion to adjourn. And by Alderman Clee, and uh, I'll call the roll. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman Harry Gathright? Yes. Alderman Clee? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. And Ms. Raymond? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending and, and uh, meeting us in the late hour. And 
enjoy. We'll keep you up to date on stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.